Okay, so your first question is, and I'll go ahead and have Andrew answer this first. As a candidate, you have seen the positive impact of RHA, or maybe even its flaws. What was your biggest inspiration for running, and how will you work to either continue or improve that event or aspect of RHA? Well, since I live in Clark Tower right now as a freshman, I can see the things that RHA has not done, such as the fact that we do not have pool cues at all. We're missing pool balls. TVs are broken. There's a lot of stuff that's just not done at all. And as RHA president, I would try my hardest to fix those issues that are currently plaguing Clark. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, Sai, if you'd like to answer next. Again, as a candidate, you have seen the positive impact of RHA, or maybe even its flaws. What are your biggest? What was your biggest inspiration for running, and how will you work to either continue or improve that event or aspect of RHA? Sure. Um, I think one of the most important things that as RHA we should do is uh, you know, foster a sense of community and uh, advocacy especially being one of the pillars. So I hope to you know, like, uh, you know, increase student a uh, advocacy and you know, make students more engaged in campus issues and so also you know, like what's going on on campus and even you know, campus leadership positions. And for the second pillar, like leadership development or you know, hosting some events, I really plan to you know, like, uh, one of the biggest events that uh, Clark Tower hosts is Jack Bash. And Jack Bash is a pretty big thing that well, most of the campus is aware of. So, and being part of Magnolia Community Council last semester, I was uh, I've been and I was working with Clark Tower uh, Residential Council as well in order to get some co-sponsorships and uh, you know try to run the thing really well. And uh, we did have quite a bit of success, you know, bringing in the Sustainability Council and uh, you know being able to recycle all the trash and have a lot of, and save a lot of money by having students, you know, clean up after that. And I think that as a community, we are responsible to make it better and make it a better place. As Andrew mentioned, I completely agree with him. You know, first, you're supposed to meet the minimum requirements of having facilities that students require. It could be, you know, like TVs or at least some basic entertainment, which could be like pool cues or foosball or anything else. And on top of that, I really want to develop on the adult events and the community aspect because that's what brings us together as a community and that's one of the key things that I hope to foster in as, as president. Great, thank you. And Daniel, um, once again, as a candidate you have seen the positive impact of RHA or maybe even its flaws. What was your biggest inspiration for running and how will you work to either continue or improve that event or aspect of RHA? Well definitely one of my biggest uh, inspirations for running was pretty much the position I held uh, uh, position I hold currently on uh, Juniper Community Council. You know, I really think that an important part of RHA that, you know, our council kind of not dropped the ball on, but definitely didn't focus on as much was advocacy. And I think that that could definitely be improved, you know, in whatever council. Like, there's never a limit to how much you can advocate for the residents. And I think that's, like, super important that we should continue to do that and, uh, you know, use the RHA pillars to uh, help incorporate all the different, uh, all the different things we want done on campus and all the different things we want done in like Clark. So, yeah. All right, well thank you to all of you. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on now to the vice presidential uh, position. Okay, so we'll go ahead and ask our question now and Morgan, you can, oh, I'm sorry, Julia, you can go ahead and um, answer this one. A large part of being a spring elected member is planning recruitment for the fall. What ideas do you have in mind for targeted recruitment that will provide the best possible council members? Uh, so since I actually also live in Clark this year as well, and so I think for recruitment it'd be nice to show them that, one, for me, one of the reasons why I chose Clark as well was that it was carpeted, which I think is really nice, and quad style, because I know some people that live in the hallway style find it a bit isolating from other members on the floor so I think it'd be nice to show that we do have a sense of community I'm very close with the people that I live with in my quad as well as the floor so I think as long as you say that it's easier to like develop friendships there as well as if you, even if you're a single I know for some people they find that a bit daunting because where I'm from my community kind of looks down on people that live, live on singles they think you're some sort of hermit because they're like why would you want to live by yourself but I think regardless of where you live 
you can find your own community. And then I think during recruitment, I could uh, make sure people feel more welcome and inviting, whether it's Clark Tower or any of the first year uh, housing or South Side or upperclassmen. Thank you. Okay, and Morgan, um, once again, the question is, a large part of being a spring elected member is planning recruitment for the fall. What ideas do you have in mind for targeted recruitment that will provide the best possible council members? Okay. Um, I think in general recruitment uh, for a lot of positions has taken a very, or for a lot of organizations generally has taken a passive approach, like generally maybe put up flyers in the hallway or um, basically have signs that say it's a self-selecting process in that case. I think there's also uh, an active component that I could play by basically going around and trying to discover people in the community that I feel could uh, strongly benefit uh, RHA by, let's say, having certain characteristics that um, would help uh, promote and establish the three pillars. And uh, that would be the biggest thing I would do. Thank you. Okay, so this next question. Councils have many times faced issues with retention throughout the year. How do you plan on addressing problems with retention in your council? I think uh, this ties heavily into the last question. Basically, uh, finding the best group members and basically finding people that are not just in the position for uh, the fact that they want, let's say, to have a leadership position on their resume, but like really establish a lasting impact that's going to uh, benefit RHA. And I think uh, especially basic, especially playing uh, a strong, uh, having a strong uh, recruitment in the fall basic would benefit uh, heavily uh, uh, keeping retention rates higher. Thank you. And Julia, once again, the question is, councils have many times faced issues with retention throughout the year. How do you plan on addressing problems with retention in your council? Um, I think that most people, we all know some people here, they only go to exec boards because, yes, as Morgan said, people want uh, just a leadership role upon the resume. But I think if you sign up for this position, I will make sure that if you do, you are genuinely interested. And if you're not, I will try to make it so that you are interested as well as, like, maybe putting you in, making you do something that you would like to do, maybe organizing a certain event, or as well, I know, maybe like a benefit or something. Like, I know for Clark, uh, they always, they do, well, throughout first year experience, they have, uh, like, donating canned foods or, like, even ramen. I know, like, college students like to keep ramen because we're all starving late at night. But I think as long as they are genuinely interested and you make them interested by giving them roles that they would like to do, I think we could solve that problem. Well, thank you to both candidates.